Now unfortunately this week's show gets a little bit personal. I wasn't really sure whether or not I wanted to show this or share it on air. Um, but I think really it's, uh, it's only fair to, we need to show the ups and downs of what we go through and our pursuits and our passions. Roy is talking about his old female goshawk. We featured her just over a year ago when he brought her out of retirement for a last couple of hunting seasons. He had had her since he was a teenager. The old girl knew the score and was an exceptional hunter. But a few days ago, Roy lost her to a fox, even though she was surrounded by a six-foot fence and his visitor Atos was just yards away, she was taken from her perch. Roy feels that giving the local foxes a break has cost him dear. I think really it just goes to show that whenever you see foxes, you can't be sentimental with them. You really have got to be on top of your game and make sure that you're keeping the numbers down because otherwise they do bite you in the backside. And this, unfortunately, is the sight that I was greeted by. Just the remnants of her legs tied to her perch. And that, unfortunately, is no way for a bird and a partnership to end. Roy now has some unfinished business, and this evening the open ground opposite his house will be getting his full attention. So what we're going to do is go and check the rifles in a minute, and then we're going to get up, set up on the banks here with the night vision, put some bait out and hope that the foxes come out. I want two rifles, so I've asked Aaron to come down and give us a hand as well. And then hopefully, if we've got two rifles, if we get more than one fox come in, we should stand a chance of getting a couple, if not the three. First up, the rifles need zeroing. Darren has been putting and playing with some different night vision on his rifle. So he very kindly whacked his uh, night vision on there and came running down, but we haven't had a chance to zero it. So we've just come out to the field and obviously we can't afford to miss any of these foxes. It has now become very personal. So we, we've had a few shots, we've got Darren on, I'm absolutely smack on. So hopefully the next time we look through the scape we shall be gazing into the eyes of a fox. This evening Darren is using a Drone Pro. We'll see more of this kit on top of his FX air rifle in airheads, but it's equally as happy on top of a centrefire rifle. Roy lamps the field before we cross it on foot. We've just gone through and lamped through quickly and they're just tucked down in the thick cover. What we've got to do now is come in over the top from the other side with the wind in our favour and into our faces, try and get into position without them making us and put some bait out. And fingers crossed they should just venture out. He spots three foxes in cover, but the wind isn't great. That's not all, the fog is thick and playing havoc with the night vision. We also have thermal, but no matter where we go, we're fighting the elements. Roy decides not to waste time and postpones our efforts until the following night. Obviously we were beaten by the fog last night, so this time we're going to put the bait out in front of where we know they're emerging from. I think there's a, an earth just in there. So we're going to put it just down a little bit and we're going to come further along the valley with the wind cutting along. So hopefully they won't catch our wind. As long as the wind doesn't change direction tonight, we should be in with a good chance. But they're certainly proving a lot trickier to get than I thought they would. This time we lay out some bait and settle down for a waiting game. The calls didn't provoke any reaction yesterday, so he reckons he needs to change strategy. He hopes the food will entice them to break cover. The light levels drop and there are now three rifles ready to go. For the first 40 minutes the only movement is from the rabbits and there are plenty of those about. Note to self. Then the first fox appears, its way across on the other side of the field. It makes its way along the bank but branches, hedges, fences and then finally the lack of backstop prevent a shot. It's frustrating, even more so when this Charlie is bouncing along the fence line until he spots us and is off. Then the thermal picks up two foxes over 300 yards away on a bank. Roy risks a squeak and one is interested enough to come for a look and then close enough to take the bait. Again, it's incredibly frustrating. Roy can't find it in the scope. Darren is also unsighted and Chris is waiting to hear a shot from either of them. With time ticking by, the fox is off. That does not make Roy a happy bunny. 
we had faults and problems from the very start there and I can't believe we've had two foxes come in one perfectly within range and another one actually came into the bait but we couldn't get a shot off where we've been lying here for so long the scopes had frozen up the temperatures really dropped and it's actually frosted on the front of the lenses so when we went to start that was it we could not do a thing so the lamp went on and the foxes disappeared we suspect it might still be about, so Darren and Chris try to see if they can get above it. Darren calls and this time the fox just romps out of the cover. Chris drops to the ground and soon has the crosshairs on it. Please tell me you got one. Excellent. Oh, well done. Thank you, Mike. All right, let's go and have a butch. Excellent. Oh well, one out of four. Right, should we go and get the others? What is amazing is how quickly it took the bait. That really is quite phenomenal. So David came out and put the, uh, the bait out and we had quail, guts, wings, and all the general discard that we have from when we prepare the quail for the birds. And there was about 10 or 11 quails worth there. So heads and everything else and all the guts. And the fox that came in, that was sitting there, was there obviously for a little while whilst we were trying to sort out our kit, but it's actually managed to truffle pretty much everything. All that's left is a couple of wings and a head. That is amazing. I mean, she was only there for a minute or so, and she's managed to literally clear the whole lot up. So they really, really can eat. That puts me to shame. Back at base, Darren feels the elements have been hindering our efforts. That's the end of another successful night, quite a frustrating night. Um, a lot of lessons learnt. The weather um, last two nights has been really against us. Uh, last night was foggy, misty. We had no chance of shooting at all, not under a lamp, not with night vision. Um, we could spot things with a thermal, but that was as good as it got. Um, we've come out tonight, the weather's been more in our favour, but the dew point has been so low. Um, both Roy and I scopes just missed it up instantly. And, um, but it shows the footage I got through the Drone Pro, um, shows it's a very versatile piece of kit. So we've done target shooting during the day, we've done squirrel shooting during the day, I've done rabbit shooting using an FAC air rifle, and we've also been out now um, spotted foxes uh, over night time. So all in all, I think it's a fantastic piece of kit, very top end. Um, so let's hope we can get out in future nights and bag some foxes. Roy can't be sure if this is the fox that took the goshawk, but we know it was the one that wolfed the bait. A quick internal reveals a full stomach. The night may not have been as successful as hoped, but Roy's work has only just begun.